Today in class, we started the first part of section 13.2, which is derivatives and integrals of vector functions. In class, we covered everything in terms of derivatives for vector functions, so all that's left is integrals. We'll be looking at definite and indefinite integrals at the end of this section. So starting with definite integrals. Definite integrals are the ones that have endpoints. So if we are taking the integral from a to b of r of t dt, we're going to start out with the definition. So if you remember when you guys started out taking integrals, the integral is the area underneath the curve. That's what you learned in Calc 1 and 2. And if you remember, you would draw in the rectangles and you would find the area of the rectangles to give you the area underneath the entire curve. And we talked about the thinner the rectangles are, the more accurate your, your answer will be. Your error will get smaller. So that's the idea with an integral. You're taking the limit as n goes to infinity of the sum from i equals 1 to n of r of t of i star times delta t. Okay, here's what this is saying. Delta t, that's like your change in x, if we're thinking back to calc 2. r of t, that's the height of the rectangle. So what you're doing is you're taking the base of the rectangle and you're mul multiplying it by the height to get an area of that one rectangle. When you take n to infinity, what you're saying is I want those rectangles to be really, really small. What that star means is that when you break up your curve into the rectangles, you can pick any value that is in that interval. You can use the left endpoint, the right endpoint, the mid endpoint, the midpoint rather, any point in that rectangle to give you the, the height. So that's the definition in Calc 3. It should be similar to what you saw in Calc 1 and 2. Now, we're not going to be using that. I expect you to know it and understand it, but we're not going to use it. Instead, we're going to use the following theorem. It's going to be really similar to derivatives. If I want to take the limit from a to b of a vector function, I'm just going to take, sorry, if you want to take the integral from a to b, you're going to take the integral of each of the component functions. So this will be the integral from a to b of f of t dt, all that multiplied by i, plus the integral from a to b of g of t dt, multiplied by j, the integral from a to b of h of t dt, multiplied by k. So that's practically what you're going to do. We have three examples that we're going to do. First one is an example six, continuing from the notes. We are going to let r of t be equal to t squared i, add e to the t j, subtract 2 cosine of pi t k. We are going to find the definite integral from 0 to 1 of r of t dt. Okay, so if I want the definite integral from 0 to 1 of r of t dt, using this idea above, I'm going to take the integral from 0 to 1 of the first component function, so the t squared dt, and then multiply by i. Then I'll have the integral from 0 to 1 of e to the t dt times j, and then the integral from 0 to 1 of negative 2 cosine of pi t dt, all of that times k. So this should be really similar to derivatives. Derivatives, you took the derivative of each component function. Integral, you're taking the integral of each component function. Okay, so this first one is going to be 1 third t cubed from 0 to 1 times i plus e to the t from 0 to 1 times j. Okay, so if I take the integral of cosine, I get negative sine. So the integral of negative cosine will be, sorry, the integral of cosine will be sine. But then we have this chain rule to undo, so we'll get negative 2 over pi sine of pi t from 0 to 1 times k. So just do a double check in your head to make sure when I take the derivative of this, I get this, and I do. I would multiply by pi, so the pi's will cancel. Derivative of sine is cosine. So this then ends up being, once I plug in my 1, I get 1 third i. When I plug in 1, I get e. When I plug in 0, I get 1, so be careful there. That's e minus 1 times j. Here, if I plug in 1, sine of pi is going to be 0, sine of 0 is 0, so it's just 0, k. Okay. So the integral from 0 to 1 of r of t dt gives the following vector function. 
So that's a definite integral. Sorry, I didn't realize I was off the screen. You're also going to have to do indefinite integrals as well. So this next example, we are going to find the integral of 2ti plus 3t squared j dt. Okay, so this is an indefinite integral. It doesn't have the endpoints. So again, you're just going to integrate both of the component functions. If I integrate that 2t, I get t squared i. If I integrate 3t squared, I get t cubed j. Here's where we need to be careful. If you remember from Calc 1 and 2, when you took an indefinite integral, you always had that plus c. That's still going to be the case here, except that c is going to be a vector. It doesn't make sense to add a constant to the end. So c might be something like the vector 1, 3. So c is a vector. So make sure that you use the proper notation. Okay. So those two examples covered the first one, definite integrals, the second one, indefinite integrals, and then we have one last example to do. Okay, example eight. We are going to find R of t given that R prime of t is equal to 3 comma 2t and r of 1 is the vector 2 comma 5. Okay, so our r of t is going to be the integral of r prime of t. So we are integrating that 3 comma 2t. So our r of t then Integrating 3, I get 3t. Integrating 2t, I get t squared. Then we talked about above, you, you need that plus c as well. Okay, we also know what r of 1 is. That's going to help us find our c vector. So r of 1, that 2, 5, is going to be equal to, when I plug in 1, so this will be 3, 1 plus C, I'm going to break it into its components. So I'm going to call that C1 and C2. Okay, so in this case, we see that 2 equals 3 plus C1 and 5 equals 1 plus C2. So 2 is 3 plus C1. I'm just equating the first components and the second components. I get C1 then to be negative 1 and C2 to be 4. So our r of t then is going to be that 3t comma t squared added with our vector c, so negative 1, 4. Generally, you'll see that written together. So you might see 3t minus 1 comma t squared plus 4. So this should remind you from so of something from Calc 2. Calc 2, sometimes you would be given information to help you find c. So it's the same idea here, just remembering that c is going to be a vector since this is a vector function. So that's the rest of the notes for section 13.2. Good luck on the homework. If you have any questions, please ask Mr. Raff. If he can't answer them, you are welcome to email me. Good luck.